this announcement was made earlier today, Tammy Duckworth. So it was uh, Duckworth and Murray who are reintroducing a bill that they had introduced in 2022, which uh, basically protects the rights of people who want to do IVF treatment. And uh, in 2022, it was completely shot down by the Republicans. It didn't go anywhere. Uh, they are going to try and force a vote on it in the Senate here. Um, it will not pass in the House, although it might. Um, this is really important because uh, we've seen in Alabama, uh, the Alabama Supreme Court say that uh, IVF is, uh, is banned because of its, essentially by saying that there is, um, that a uh, fertilized egg is a person. Right. And the person uh, who can survive in a freezer for, you know, 10 years. Cry cryogenically a frozen person. Um, but this is this bill. You know, I would love to see a bill that was even more explicit about personhood. But uh, this is a good bill. And here uh, is Tammy Duckworth's announcement. Women at risk. You know, I was stationed in Alabama for a bit when I was in the Army. In fact, it's the home of Fort Novacell, the home of Army Aviation. I didn't know it at the time, but my infertility would become one of the most heartbreaking struggles of my life. My miscarriage more painful than any wound I ever earned on the battlefield. So it's a little personal to me when a majority male court suggests that people like me who are not able to have kids without the help of modern medicine should be in jail cells and not taking care of their babies in nurseries. I know I'm not alone when I struggle to understand how politicians who support this kind of policy can possibly call themselves pro-life. After Roe v. Wade was overturned, actually even before then, when Donald Trump promised to only appoint justices who would overturn it, I warned that red states would come for IVF. And now they have. But they aren't go just going to stop in Alabama. Mark my words, if we don't act now, it will only get worse. That's why tomorrow I'm headed to the Senate floor to call on my colleagues to pass, via unanimous consent, my Access to Family Building Act, which would ensure that every American's right to become a parent via treatments like IVF is fully protected, regardless of what state they live in, guaranteeing that no hopeful parent or doctor is punished. What's also interesting in this uh, bill is it would establish an individual's statutory right and I'm reading from uh, the uh, the statement from uh, Duckworth's office. Uh, the use or disposition of their reproductive genetic materials, including gametes. Now, Google tells me that gametes are reproductive cells. Um, they could include a, uh, a sperm cell or an egg. And certainly, if you have full control over your sperm and your egg, um, you do once they come together as well. Um, and, I mean, personally, I would like a bill that says, yeah. we are going to, uh, you know, from a statutory perspective, if you want to believe that a, a fertilized egg is a person, you are welcome to. But from a statutory standpoint, from the question of law, that is not a person. That is not uh, someone who can go out and vote or walk or talk or crawl or whatever it is. It's not even um, a fetus. It's not a fetus. <laughs> it's, it's not it's even not, a fetus. Um, and the fact that Duckworth introduced this all the way like two years 20, ago in exactly. 2022 already, she's not lying that she anticipated that this was going to happen. And I like the I like the tactic of trying to force the vote. Um, on this because it doesn't give the Republicans hopefully an opportunity to kind of um, catch their breath on this because they understand like they are so concerned about the suburban white woman voter that is the battleground for the Republicans and I think Biden's campaign has a better sense that they'll go more towards him and this is not good news for that at all going after IVF um, so this puts the Republicans in a bad position, and I like that about the bill, um, plus the substance of it as well.